Well, I thought I'd do a, a reveal on a, a new piece of equipment we got here on the farm. And it's not this thing. This is our new Holland 156 tatter, which is a coon. And uh, there's something going on inside. There's a bearing or something seized up. And uh, thought about tearing it down. And I probably will before it's over with. But uh, I felt like for this year I needed to uh, add another tether to our hay operation and, uh, and then not have all my eggs in this basket. And uh, so today we bought a new tether. So another thing we've been pondering up here is our hay rake situation. And I think as I mentioned, uh, this rake right here is probably 50 years old at least. It might be 60. This one is probably 50 years old. It's a New Holland 60, uh, New Holland 57, and that's a John Deere 350. Uh, this rake has got some gearbox problems. I don't know how major it is. Uh, this one needs a, a mating drive shaft. And uh, the square tube came out of that part last year when I was coming out of the field. Uh, that seems like an easy enough repair. But nonetheless, uh, I've been uh, up to my ears uh, this spring, and we thought if we're going to be busy buying a, uh, a another tether, you know, let's take a hard look at rakes. And so we bought another uh, hay rake. So in considering we uh, absolutely wanted to buy a tether and uh, a, a rake would be nice if we're going to be buying something. Uh, a rake would be nice. And uh, we did a lot of research, a lot of reading and asking questions. And uh, this is not the what I'm about to show you is not the last uh, hay rake. It's not the last tether that's going to be on this farm. Uh, we'll, we will definitely go bigger, I think, at some point. But uh, for right now, this is the right piece of equipment in my mind uh, for this farm. And that is a Premier TR90. And this is a rake and tether combination. It's, uh, that's why the designation TR, Tether Rake. A little more background on this thing. Uh, this is a, this is really a Lely, L-E-L-Y, Lotus 300 Combi, C-O-M-B-I. And, uh, <clears throat> if you look at on the internet and do some searching around, uh, even on YouTube, you'll find uh, uh, a number of videos where people are tedding hay or they're uh, raking hay with this tedder. Now, there's a lot of reasons why I bought this one, and I'll get into a few of them right now. I looked at uh, used tedders first. Really, we wanted to tedder. The ones I found were just junk. They were beat up. They were not. I didn't feel like they were reliable. And but I just kept reading about these things, and they're bad about breaking tines. They're bad about uh, you know just breaking down. This tether has uh, heavy-duty tine arms. Uh, these tines are uh, significant in their diameter. One thing I liked about these hook tines is they're angled, a little hard to see. So they don't they don't point directly into the ground. And with this other uh, tether over here, you know, we carved some ground with that thing with the tether tines uh, pointing straight down. And these guys, with their angle, you know, they're already uh, kind of on a slope. So I'm inclined to think that they're not gonna break as easy as a conventional time that just sticks straight down. 
up here, you know, we have a fair number of uh, uh, bumps and gr there's groundhog holes and you can uh, buy a used uh, tether that's cheaply made and uh, new, you can buy the same thing, but it only takes one hard knock and you've got trouble. And so in my mind, this uh, Vermeer, this Lely tether is going to withstand that kind of shock uh, more so than others. It has uh, eight tine arms per rotor. Uh, the, the Coon tether, New Holland Coon I've got over here, it's got six. I think a Crone has uh, seven per uh, rotor. I might be wrong about that. All right, so we got the Lely, the Vermeer, off the truck and got it on the back of the John Deere. I'm heading for the barn, but when I get over here, I'm going to stop for a few minutes and just let the, the rake down and let you kind of see what it looks like. So I turned the tractor off so you could hear it a little better. You can see these tines. Now they kind of brush along the ground like that, the hook. That's supposed to be uh, an excellent uh, way to tead hay. The hooks grab the hay and give it a sling. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take these pins out and take that guard loose and I'm going to reset this thing, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like in the rake position. So the way this works, uh, these little cages right here flip over this way, and you take this guy out, and this guy out, and... Supposed to sit over there on this one. Now, obviously, you put the pin back, and this one, and set that over there. And then you take this pin loose. And this pin loose. And I'm going to try to do this one-handed without breaking my head. And what happens is, this guy right here uh, swivels over and down. Like that. See, that one's up and that one's down. So then, again, I've already taken the pin out of that. I'm just going to kind of grab this one up here and see if I can let it down in an orderly way and then you take this pin out and you set that guy over there right there like that and I won't pin everything down because I'm I am going to put this thing away and you take this one and And there's the width of your wind road. That looks like about three feet. And you can bring it in. These are, uh, there are different holes, so you can make that wind row even more narrower if you want. And just like that, uh, you've changed this tether uh, to being a hay rake. Of course, you know, you have to adjust these things to the inside, which is pretty easy. We may not need to ted the day we bale. A lot of times we'll ted the day we bale and we'll ted earlier in the morning and then later that evening we've got a rake running right in front of the baler. And, and, and what we're trying to do, again, is just to get the grass off of the ground. It's kind of matted down from the dew. And we want it stirred up again. Well, 
you can see right here that if we're in windrow mode when these things turn uh, it's scratching up all the grass off the ground and putting it into a windrow it's not that when when the hay comes out of this rake when the hay comes out of this rake uh, it's all been moved and uh, and essentially has been tatted again it just happens to go into a windrow so one of the things uh, about this tether that I like about it is that the the rotor follows the center of the tractor and what I want is windrow coming off my mower conditioner I want to put it right down the center of that tractor and I want this uh, basket right here to grab it and then I want this basket over here to grab all or half of the uh, windrow that's on this side and then when I get to the other end I'll come back and I'll put that basket on a fresh windrow over here and this one as it comes back would we'll grab the other half of it so I'm back in this uh, rake in and I noticed this sign right here. I'm thinking, why is that thing setting off to the side? Well, that bracket's not bent. And then it occurs to me that I can pull this pin out. I can swing this tether around so that it more closely follows. The whole tether is more centered up on the tractor. So let me do that. So there it is. It's locked into transport position and that beam is coming straight off the tractor. And you can see how much is sticking over this side and how much is sticking over this side. It's pretty even. Uh, kind of a slickery feature in my opinion. Nine feet tedding, just a little bit less raking. Anyway, that's the that's the Vermeer TR90, the Lely Lotus 300 Combine, and we're glad to have it here. Glad to have it on the farm. I'm hoping I can put it on this tractor and leave it, and we do all our cutting and baling with the big Massey Ferguson, and we might use the little Massey 50 to just hustle some wagons around down here on the level ground. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, and we'll talk to you later.